Peace, power, and protection, my beautiful, beautiful Scorpios. Thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. Welcome to First Star Visions. Welcome to your reading, beloveds. I will. Everything is everything on your side of the planet. Everything is everything on mine. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a little deep dive. See what's coming and going out, going on with my beloved Scorpios. I will. Each and every one of the beautiful souls are feeling amazing, grounded, balanced, and in alignment everything is everything on my side of the planet um so what we're going to do is we're going to take a little deep dive um i wanted to see what was happening because personally i don't know about y'all but this energy has been feeling pretty intense you know there's seven planets in retrograde and it's like i feel it i feel every inch of that i feel all of, of the um the intensity of seven planets being in retrograde i've been having a lot of technical issues even though mercury is not in retrograde i've just been having a lot of technical issues a lot of miscommunication misunderstanding um a lot of folks from the past have been popping up uh some for good reasons others for the same old same old ulterior motives um but it's just been very very interesting uh, so just keep your head on a swivel. Just be very alert. Be very mindful. Be sure to connect. Um, the way that you can really uh, remain in harmony with yourself is just getting out in nature as much as you can and being amongst the trees, being amongst water, uh, because that does keep you grounded. Um, and it does allow for you to release any baggage, any negativity that you may be carrying around energetically. Thus, it will make things more clearer. You'll have more clarity or things will become more illuminated as opposed to you being a little confused and conflicted and um by just sitting in the four walls in these you know these buildings and these acs you need the nature uh to balance that energy but um welcome to any of you that may be new as i said my name is q i channel messages intuitively i am an empath and i'm also clear audience so during my readings you will hear me playing music and the way that it works the name of the song lyrics within the song maybe the artist time stamp on the clock it will all correlate to what i may be channeling intuitively as well as what the cards will be showing and it all blends very beautifully so my spiel here is of course eat the fish spit out the bones if the reading doesn't apply just let it fly by let it go let it flow do not try to force anything to be your story my readings are also timeless so whenever this video has popped up in your feed that was divine timing and in divine order that you've done so beloved so without further ado we're going to go proceed with the read but we're going to do a little house cleaning before we do our shade so let's go ahead and take a deep inhale. We're going to exhale and then we shall proceed. I'll shed. I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit. Ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe, source, the divine, most high God, our creator, to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Ubatala, Mama Oya, and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, number, synchronicity, and vibrations of my cards. And so it is. So mode it be. Ashe, 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 yo. So it is currently, see what we have planned. So it is currently 1128 on the clock. So that's three. It's about to be 1129, which will make it 1111 again. Uh, and we have Nas, and the name of the song is Locomotive. So a locomotive is a train. So some of you could be traveling this summer. Some of you may feel um, a distance. When I think of the number three, um, that's always like a number of ready, set, go, or planning, preparing, strategizing. Um, you know, it's like you're anticipating something. So maybe you're anticipating an upcoming trip, or maybe you 
are uh, planning uh, to visit loved ones or to visit a particular place, um, but you may be traveling by train. Maybe if you are in some of those larger cities like New York, Chicago, California, you commute on the cha trains often. Um, with Life is Good, because the name of this album is Life is Good, this is Nas's album, and it is now 1129. I do feel like maybe this is just uh, insinuating that there's someone incoming. Maybe there's some good news coming. Maybe someone is coming in that you haven't seen in a while. Someone's paying you a visit. Someone may be traveling to see you. Maybe this is something unexpectedly. Um, that number three is associated with the Empress. So this could be someone that has an attraction towards you, sees you as a divine feminine. If you're a divine masculine, sees you as a, a, a divine masculine, someone very uh, dapper, debonair, very strong and, and, and confident and bold and, and, and just very intelligent, articulate, uh, wise soul, someone very powerful. Full. Uh, so you could be attracting um, a beloved counterpart that has these feelings. And I feel like life is is really genuinely good for you right now. Um, nobody's ever where they exactly want to be. But I feel like, you know, with everything that has transpired, everything that has occurred, um, life is starting to balance out for you. Um, and I feel like, you know, maybe post some some unfortunate or misfortunate circumstance, um, Things are balancing out because I'm getting like the three of swords as well, where, you know, you may have had to relocate or move um, after being disappointed or after being hurt or after a betrayal or after a separation from someone. And uh, through um, that experience, you've learned a lot about yourself. It's almost like you have gotten into that hangman state, which is number 12, which also reduces to three. And you've assessed things. You're looking at things. Um with with honesty now um you're no longer in that victim seat you're now a victor because you've persevered or overcome something very traumatic something difficult and maybe you've planned um a move you know like i said maybe you're uh planning your out if you're still dealing with said situation you could be you know strategizing a way to get out of a circumstance and i feel like once you remove yourself from that situation life will be good so perhaps some of you are planning to move away um what we have here on the bottom of the deck is we have 77 spirituality um if you are new here whenever i see double numbers um that always makes me feel like you're attracting someone that's in your likeness or someone that's very similar um and just attitude spirituality is saying there's a sacred or spiritual connection um this is also you could be uh being assigned or ordained uh, your role so you could be starting to live your your purpose um, Perhaps you're bumping into your person you're being aligned with your person or your purse purpose uh, With the 77 14 that breaks down to five So perhaps there is a sense of you building and developing your skill um, Learning uh, perhaps you're investigating researching maybe you're sitting at the feet of elders uh, Master teachers healers shamans light workers. Maybe you're sitting at the feet of you know, just in uh, a maternal or paternal figure in your family, or matriarch or patriarch in your family seeking advice, um, eating the fruits of knowledge, learning, building your wealth of knowledge. Maybe you're honing up specific skill or, um, you know, honing your skills and mastering your craft, um, sharpening your sword. So this is like, you know, you practicing something day in, day out. This is something that um, is absolutely. Uh, your calling. I feel like this is something you were born to do. This is something that's very passionate to you. Um, this is a way that you express yourself, uh, whether that be creatively or artistically. This is another form of your expression. Uh, and I feel like this makes you uh, very attractive. So you could be attracting other like minds, as I said. You could be attracting other people um, that are on a similar path. So you're aligning with people that are on a similar path as you, which is beautiful. What we have here on the split is we have 48, and uh, that's financial discipline. So I do feel like there is a sense of you collaborating. I'm hearing a collaborative effort, and I was getting a sense of you attracting other like minds. So you will be building alliances and partnerships with other like minds. Because this 48 um, breaks down to 12, which is 3. 
So I do feel like you are attracting people who will be willing to invest, willing to work together to team. I'm hearing teamwork makes the dream work. Um, I'm also feeling like whatever you're doing, as I said, it's something that you were born to do. There's pink and green here, which both deal with the heart chakra. So I feel like this is something you absolutely love. Um, even if this is a person you're coming into, there's going to be like this mutual um, respect for one another, respect for one another's gifts, talents. But then there will be something that can develop into a more um, sacred bond is what I'm giving. Um, because this could also like emerge into like a marriage uh, because the 577 seven breaks down to 14, which is five. That is dealing with the Hierophant and the Hierophant can also speak to marriage and institutions in addition to learning institutions and building your wealth of knowledge. It's a very studious energy, but I feel that you're matching someone made in your likeness. And this relationship um, only grows, it blossoms into something deeper. Um, this eight that these both reduce to is telling me that this can be a wish fulfillment, something that you've manifested, especially with the seven, seven spirituality, like you have that spiritual strength to call in and draw in what you desire because you've become wiser from your experiences of the past. So with you manifesting um, and setting your intention and visualizing and speaking what you desire into the ethers and utilizing the elements around you of water, fire, earth, air, and ether, and even feeling the effects of all of the celestial energy. It's like you're calling in, drawing in what you desire. So this is um, definitely showing me that there's some sort of wish fulfillment or a blessing, an answer to a prayer. You could be getting rewarded. Uh, with financial discipline, I do feel like you are someone who works very hard um, to maintain your independence. You work very hard to, um, you know, to achieve your goals. So let's tap in. So divine spirit, peace, power, and peace. What messages do you have for my beloved, beloved Scorpios? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. My beautiful, beautiful spirit. And what we have playing right now. Um, on the playlist is we have um, this looks like Ma oh this is Mary G. Blige and this is called Happy and remember earlier with um, now as life is good I was feeling like you was coming out of a dark period with that three that we started the reading off with so it's like you know now you are starting to really own your power so you're really manifesting you really um, doing the things that are uh, assuring some sort of victory or some sort of positive outcome. So what you have here that's flying out of my hand is you have the number five. So we're going to let that fall. So there is a major change. This is that same number that we had um, with that 7-7 seven, seven spirituality. So something within you has changed. I feel like even the way that you communicate and ex express yourself has changed. It's like you're starting to speak your truth now. You're starting to own your truth. You're even starting to, um, you know, um, embark on some of those dreams or following your dream. You're being more fearless. Um, and this is changing you. This is altering something within you. Um, I feel there also could be some sort of communication that could be coming in that's going to change um, perhaps your perspective uh, with happy. I feel like maybe this is some good news that could be coming in because you have Mary J. Blige playing. Uh, maybe someone, some of you all could be from New York, from Yonkers, from the Bronx. Maybe you're dealing with someone named Mary or J or a B in their name. Uh, with this change... I definitely feel like this is a positive change. I feel like spirit is also giving you signs, synchronicities. So you should be paying attention, paying close attention. Whether those signs and synchronicities be in the form of numbers, or maybe you're bumping into the same animal totems when you're out in nature, or maybe you're bumping into um, perhaps a, 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 the same person. Um, maybe you're hearing a certain song. Give me one moment. My cat is out on the patio. Give me one minute. Little Katara was out on the patio trying to get it. So, yeah, so maybe you're bumping into, you know, um, you know, like finding feathers. Um, I found a beautiful feather uh, when the day that I took my daughter to go see Erica Badu. Um, we, we drove home the next day. <laughs> and um, as I was driving, I saw this beautiful feather in the middle of the road. 
Um, and I was just like, you know, my daughter was like, how in the world did you spot that? But let me show you this beautiful feather. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And um, it was just sitting there waiting for me. So, and, and the funny thing about it is I had took a wrong turn, you know, and, and that's why I say there's never any accidents or coincidences. So that wrong turn led to me finding this beautiful feather. Look at that. You know, so some of you could be finding feathers. Some of you could be having similar, um, you know, encounters. Or maybe you're hearing the same songs, um, you know, and, and there's a message, you know, that, that's that's what's being conveyed is there there's there's a message there. Maybe you're seeing 888-777-666. We're currently um, still in the 777 portal uh, on 77, which was two Fridays ago. Um, that portal opened up. We just had 716 open up a couple of days ago on Sunday, last Sunday. Um, and now we have the 725 portal. That's the last of, you know, the 777 portal. So I have posted like some, some manifestation, um, meditation videos so that you could call in and draw in uh, more money more finances success abundance you know um maybe even just helping you to gain traction if you are starting a business if you currently have a business and you feel things are kind of slow you know start utilizing these um portals to call in and draw in what you desire um but pay attention to the signs and synchronicities. There could also be very lucid dreams that some of you are having. You may be having dreams that you need to uh, keep a journal and, and then decode that dream, you know. Uh, but whenever you see certain synchronicities, even if you're driving and you're constantly seeing the same numbers, like yesterday, for instance, I was driving and I kept seeing 777 everywhere. And then I saw 888. Um, and then it was funny because my daughter sent me... Um, like a little um message she's visiting her family in new york right now um or the family i'm saying her family it's our family she's visiting the family in um new york right now but she sent me this little message uh speaking on the number 888 and she knew you know i had been seeing that a lot lately as well and it was just saying how um you know it's confirmation that there is a windfall coming that there's fortune and fame that is assured and your angels are confirming that. So there's ways that your angels, your guides, your ancestors, your spirit team will communicate with you. So it, it, it will behoove you to, to really connect. That's why it's important to really connect. So you know whenever you're being communicated with. But I digress. So we have this 87 synchronicity here on the bottom of the deck. So there are some changes that are going to be taking place. And I feel these are positive changes. Um, so let's tap in, beloveds. Let's see. Let's get a couple more shuffles and then we are going to proceed with the read. You know, remember that card chose itself. So whenever they just are almost like jumping out of my hand, I just let it. So if I'm scared of peace, power, and protection, let me get a message from my beloved Scorpios. Thank you, Spirit. I'm going to cut the deck. And right now we have uh, Miles Davis. And the name of this is Blue in Green. And so the blue deals with the throat chakra. Green deals with the heart chakra. So there is someone who could want to communicate with you um, a message of love. Because remember that three that we started off with that is associated with the empress. And the empress, as I said, is very, very attractive. She's very beautiful. Uh, so she draws a lot of attention. She's also seen as very powerful, a mastermind. Because she can mass, you know, man, master manifest her desires. She's also very maternal and very nurturing, um, even domestic. You know, she knows how to keep house. She's very self sufficient. Uh, she's a wife. You know, she's a mother. She births new styles and ways of thinking. She births new projects. If that's a masculine energy, the same thing is applicable. He's a very pro protective man, a provider. He's devoted. Um, He's also someone who's very resourceful and um, a nurturer as well in his own right. Uh, he's the disciplinary, but he's also uh, very supportive. So you could be, you know, attracting that. Uh, maybe someone is going to be expressing their love or you could be having someone come in that is going to just um, embody all of the characteristics uh, that you desire, you know. Uh, what we have here on the bottom of the deck is timeout. So this is what you're attracting to you. 
And this timeout is at number 37, which breaks down to 10. So I feel like there's an end of someone being uh, kind of like a recluse or being in isolation or secluded because uh, I get a sense of someone like really working on themselves and when you're working on yourselves you don't have time for anyone else um, it's like you kind of like detach unplug and go within um, and I get a sense of whether this being someone um, that you may have put in time out in the past or someone that was currently in time out like in uh, in focus mode, you know, because when you go in timeout, it's like you're taking a timeout from all of the chaos, from all of the noise of the outside world, and you're really taking that time to go within. This five and this 37, that breaks down to six. So you could be attracting like a twin flame, a soulmate, because six is associated not only with the first die, but it's also associated with the lovers. And the lovers is, you know, that could be um, a union, a sacred union, a spiritual bond, connection. Um, spiritual um, partnership that you could be developing with another person like a twin flame or a past life love or this could just be you coming into union into harmony with yourself because you've taken the necessary time out to heal and to affect the change that was necessary for you to evolve um, with this six I do feel you're highly intuitive you're very discerning and you don't do anything now unless your spirit speaks um, speaks to it, you know. Uh, so what, how someone feels about you, we got nine on the bottom of the deck, which is completion. So you have wrapped up a cycle. So if someone does see that you have evolved, you have transformed, you've gone through some sort of rebirth or you've been reborn. Um, it's like you're a different person now, hence the change coming out. So you have made changes. Like even the way you communicate, the way you convey, the way you express yourself, there's a change that has been affected by some death, you know, um, but by something that has transcend, uh, transpired in your past, pardon me. Uh, and this took, this is showing the time that you took to invest in yourself, invest in self-love, self-worth, self-care. Um, because we saw that self-discipline. So that self-discipline is all, uh, not self-discipline, we saw financial discipline. And so I feel like when you are disciplining yourself, it's like you're assessing the whole. You can't, you can't discipline yourself financially without disciplining other parts of your attitude and behavior uh, and characteristics. So this is why there was a time out uh, required. Um, a timeout necessary because it allowed for you to make those necessary changes. And I'm hearing Michael Jackson so loud in my mind's eye. Make that change. Man in the mirror. Like I'm hearing, it's like screaming at me. So some of y'all could be dealing with someone named Michael or Jackson. First, middle, or last. Maybe you were born in India, Indianapolis. I believe that's where Michael, Gary, Indiana. That's where he's from from Indiana, maybe you're dealing with someone from Indiana. Maybe someone's name is Gary. But I was hearing that so loud in my mind's eye. So what you have here, how someone feels about you, um, is we have the love partnership here on the bottom of the deck. So there is a sense that someone does see you as their twin flame soulmate. Um, we did have that three, as I said, very attractive energy. Um, we got B, Notorious B.I.G., sky is the limit. So you definitely are you know, flying high. It's like there's this 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 energy within you where whomever you're attracting to you, it's like you could take it to um to, like it, it's going to reach new heights, this love. You know, because with sky is the limit, it's like there's there are no limitations. The sky is infinite infinite. So it's like there are no limitations to what this can be. Um, and I feel like this has a lot to do with, uh, you know, a love connection or a love partnership. I feel you've walked away from relationships that made you feel empty or invalidated or, um, you know, not appreciated, not respected. It's like you, you, you showed self-love by walking away from relationships that left you feeling emotionally bankrupt and you put people on time out. And through putting these folks on time out, it led to your ascension, but you've moved away completely. You you, you packed up and moved because this eight 
is showing that, you know, I'm getting like the Eight of Cups where you have moved away from folks. The Six is even giving me the Six of Swords uh, where you moved away. Remember the train um, locomotive and I was picking up like some of you may have relocated or will be moving. Maybe you're traveling. Um, but I'm just getting a sense of like some of you all, um, that was the change that you implemented was a move. And when you moved, you started to see your life improve um, because you weren't around those energy vampires. You weren't around those leeches. You weren't around those parasites, those those individuals that were using you as their life force, their life source, life source. Um, people that were living vicariously through you, riding your coattail. Um, when you made the change, um, it's like you sparked something within you. And whatever you uh, became aware of, um, you made an ode to be true to yourself and to manifest the life that you knew you deserve and that you know you deserve. You know it's your birthright to live um, in harmony with another person and not in conflict, not in constant uh, arguments and, and hostility and a constant battle or competition. Um, a love partnership, especially a healthy one, is not a competitive um, connection because you both know that you're a team, you know, you're, you're on the same team. Uh, so if one is fallen, then the other one, it's the other's job to, to try to maintain that connection. So the whole uh, unit doesn't fail. You okay, Katara? You okay, my friend? Oh, I hear you over there whimpering. Come here, baby. You all right? Oh, that little girl. You got a little itchy itch. I got to give you some of your little stuff, in, your little ear ointment. Oh, that baby. That baby friend. It's okay. It's okay, friend. All right, so I, I apologize. I heard her over there, like, crying. You know, we have these silly rugs. I don't know why apartment complexes, like, even bother with putting rugs. Every apartment needs wood floors because it's like when you think of the allergens and dust mites and it's just like the air quality gets affected. And then I have a kitten or a cat. I call her kitten because she's still like my baby. But it's like, you know, what it, the, the dust particles, I think, they get in her ears. So I had to buy her like this ear ointment just to clean her ear out. But she sometimes it's like it frustrates her, you know, because it gets very um, uncomfortable. So I heard her over there crying. It's okay. You okay, friend? You okay now? You okay? Okay, she's going to sit in my lap, it looks like. All right. Okay, get comfortable. Hi. Hi, cutie. All right, so let's tap in. So how someone feels about you is they definitely feel like you've walked away. And it's all about self-love at this point. You know, self-love is the best love. You're loving you, yourself, and you. You're walking away from anything that doesn't honor you, value you, appreciate you. And what we have is two patients. And that's going to be there for when we pull the card for what's hidden. But look what came out. You got three creativity. And remember, you started the reading at three. And three deals with what? The empress. You know, if you're masculine, that's the emperor. But D three deals with that empress energy. So someone definitely, um, you know, sees you in your likeness, sees you as, you know, just a very beautiful, radiant soul, very wise soul, nurturing soul, um, very empathic, compassionate, caring, um, nurturing, loving. Um, you, you have all of, you know, the attributes and characteristics of all of the queens combined. So it's like this is like a level of self-mastery that you've achieved that someone is really uh, admiring from a distance. I feel like you have a secret admirer. Um, and this person, whoever this person is, uh, this is someone that feels your wish fulfillment. Uh, this is also someone that sees that you're single um, and you're independent, you're self-sufficient. You've established uh, your own independence, your own self uh, resilience because whatever you've endured in your past, uh, you've literally, you know, have transmuted that circumstance. You turn pain into power. Uh, that three I was getting earlier, I said that you went through heartache and heartbreak and loss, but you have, uh, you know, you've arisen, you've risen or emerged, I should say, as this empress, as someone who's reached that level of self mastery, someone who has a deeper, more profound understanding. Um, of life and how to navigate it. You're a master manifester. Um, you're also a creative. You're a creative being. So you may know how to do a lot of things. You may know how to sew, sing, produce. Like you just do different things. Like you just can be, you know, almost like, uh, you know, that, that renaissance 
man or woman, someone who's just very enlightened. Um, and it's because you take the time to study. You take the time to learn new things. You're always building your wealth of knowledge. You're always growing. Um, you're always reading and researching. Uh, with this five and the six um, and this three, that's the nine. So I'm getting like the nine of pentacles where you have achieved this success on your own and, and you had to rebuild from the ground up because if you were at a three of swords, that's like the death. That feels like a death. It, 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 it's, it, it's an ending of something that you um, always felt was going to be your, your happy place or your forever, happily ever after. And it ended suddenly in betrayal or it ended suddenly by infidelities or someone deceiving you or someone backstabbing you. And then you have to heal from all of that pain. But then you also have to go even further to deeply understand well, why do I attract this type of love? Why have I attracted this type of love? So that's a, a soul um, journey that you were on. And I feel like that's why that time out was very uh, necessary because it allowed for you to gain this epiphany. You know, this yellow card that deals with your solar plexus. And your solar plexus is the sun that shines within. And so whatever was blocked, whatever hurt and pain you endured, from whether it was, you know, your childhood, whether it was in your family, or whether it was in your love ships, your friendships, your colleagues, work dynamics. It's like you had to literally go through, uh, you know, go through this 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 soul journey to heal uh, some of these pains uh, that were, um, you know, the cause and effect of something from your past. And I feel like you you absolutely did that. Because now you are operating and functioning from a place of strength, courage, and wise don't. You're wiser now. Um, you have, you know, you've gained some sort of grand epiphany, uh, but you're also very luminous. People see you as strong-willed, see you as someone very, um, very happy, very joyful. I feel like you have happy endings coming. I feel like whatever you're working on, it's, it's, it's a success. It will be successful, and it's because of the type of person you are. You work hard, therefore, you will receive rewards for your hard work. You will receive the recognition for your hard work. This nine is also showing that you're very guarded, um, very protective now of your heart. You're very protective of your space and who you allow in it. Because the people you've trusted in your past, you've learned, unfortunately, that those individuals were parasites, that they were leeches, that they were energy vampires, and they were frenemies. They weren't your friends. Your lovers, they were working as your com competition and not your partners. So you had to literally take a step back. And that's what this time out is all about. It's about self-reflection. It's about self-analysis. Um, because in order for you to grow and heal, you have to look at yourself. You have to take onus, accountability, and you have to be responsible for your own actions. That is how one grows. That is how one heals. When you stay in a victim space or a victim state of mind, you will never heal and grow because you will always look at other people as the cause for your misfortune or your unhappiness. And I feel that, that that's the complete opposite of what you did. You made the necessary changes within you by taking that time to learn, to grow, to heal, to improve yourself. And that ultimately helped you to change. It also helped you to open up your throat chakra, communicate your needs, your wants, your desires, express your truth, stand your ground, speak your truth more importantly, and be bold doing so. That's what brought you ultimately in harmony. You know, because like I said, the lovers, that's a masculine and feminine energy, which means you're in a harmony emotionally as well as um, logically. Uh, so you're in balance and thus you become someone that is seen as, you know, this maternal figure or as a paternal figure, as a nurturer, as a lover, as a healer, shaman, you know. Um, so what we have here on the bottom of the deck, we're about to pull a card for what's hidden. So this patience is showing that whatever decisions that you're going to need to make, Spirit is telling you to take the time to balance yourself out. So meditate, get things straight, contemplate on your next move, uh, but don't just rush. Um, and definitely 
uh, don't be stuck in two minds. Be very patient. Patience is a form of action. Two is also associated with the high priestess. So I feel like that spirit saying, trust your intuition. And also be mindful that there are things that may be hidden from you, hidden in plain sight. Or there may be um, a need to kind of take a step back uh, from a situation and assess it further. Um, but let's tap in. So this two is saying patience. You know, and, 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 and that could also be just speaking to, you know, everything happening in the divine time. So what you're attracting to you, it's hidden right here. And what you have on the bottom of the deck, we got 19 pride. So perhaps that's why patience was necessary because there's an ego death taking place. And when you have an ego death, that means that that's because someone has had that aha moment or that epiphany that I was speaking of early, earlier. So the stubbornness is gone. The confusion, the fear, all of those things that develop ego and pride um it's like someone is getting rid of that that fear because fear is nothing more than false expectations appearing real fear also robs you of your peace which is a positive energy activating constant elevation so you can't elevate if you're constantly living in fear you can't elevate if you're constantly you know proud and, and stubborn and hard-headed and egotistical and you don't hear uh, anyone else's perspective or you're not open-minded enough to feel how others feel you only think from your own standpoint and and you're not considering the whole picture so it's like this pride this ego death this is allowing someone to have some sort of aha what we also have is five so this 55 adventure this is about being spontaneous taking risks being bold being daring and, and moving to the beat of your drum. And then you have that eight manifestation. So there's definitely something you're working on, something you're manifesting. And I do see that you are realizing your power, owning it more so now, because that 37, as I said, when you take that time out to end those unhealthy connections and purge those people, those places, those behaviors, getting rid of faulty belief systems and ideologies and habits and attitudes, um, then you start to take on that magi energy, that alchemist energy, you know, that al alchemical force and that magi energy. They know how to set intention and to create the reality that they desire by changing their thought, by changing their minds about things, changing the way that they communicate, changing the way they express themselves or their needs, visualizing what they desire. But this 88 abundance, so you are attracting like a wish fulfillment. This is also, again, remember we saw 77, spirituality, and I said, whenever I see double numbers, I always feel that you're attracting someone in your likeness. Well, that's exactly what you're doing. You're attracting someone who you may feel or deem as a wish fulfillment, or you're attracting your blessings, you know, your rewards, your recognitions, miracles, answer to your prayers. Um, we have Maxwell, as I'm speaking to that, and he's singing Fortunate. Can you see that? Fortunate. To have you, girl, I'm so glad you're in my world. Rest assured, as the sky is blue, I bliss the day that I found you. So that could be in regards to a love, you know, but that could also speak to you attracting fortune, fame, success, prosperity, opulence, things expanding in your life. But this 88, it breaks down to 16. 16 breaks down to 7. So that means this is rushing in. It's coming in quickly because the 7 is associated to with the chariot. Um, that speaks to someone that also could be building their confidence. You know, maybe they're being more assertive. Um, maybe this is someone that has taken the time to, to find that balance and that equilibrium emotionally within themselves. With this being a pink card, I absolutely feel uh, that there will be emotional fulfillment. Um, in addition to financial blessings, because uh, I keep hearing miracle, I keep hearing wheel of fortune. So I feel like something is turning around in your favor. This is something that you have earned. Um, I definitely feel like this is a blessing that you've earned uh, by your hard work and efforts. Your angels and your guides are rewarding you. And they're going to give you plenty. I was picking up fruitfulness and, and prosperity earlier. And uh, with this coupled right next to this beautiful uh, empress vibration, um, you're going to be elated. You know, you're going to be overjoyed. You know, because you have abundance and then you have this creativity. So something that you have been creatively working on and something that you have really been masterminding, it is going to uh, it is going to be uh, very 
uh, successful for you. And um, I feel that's definitely um, has a lot to do, you know, with you ridding yourself of the ego. You know, when you're too proud and egotistical, it's like you also block your blessings um, as well. So I do get a sense of like, you know, even if you were trying to control the narrative, just merely surrendering to spirit and even owning the fact, um, you know, that you are powerful um, and that you are capable of doing whatever it is you set your intentions to. That is what also opens it up. What I'm also being told is that this 19 and this 37, which are both 10s, because uh, this is the card for who you're attracting, who or what. Um, I feel like, you know, someone does, you know, take onus. Someone does take that time out um, to check themselves. You know, the pride can hinder you, um, you know, but don't, you know, you there's a such thing as being too proud. Even if that's you, uh, pride could also be in the form of, you know, needing assistance but not asking for it out of pride. And I'm here in delegate. You know, you have to delegate as necessary. You know, um, you shouldn't have to force people to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, but you do have to delegate. You do have to ask for what you need because closed mouths don't get fed. So let's see what the outcome is. Even if that's a boss, even if that's a children's father or a children's mother, even if that's from your friends or family, ask for what you need. Let people know what your boundaries are. Because if you have changed, then that means that the way that people handle you and deal with you has also changed. And it's because you've learned your worth and you've learned your value. So what you have here is we have self-love. See that? So as I'm speaking about you changing and learning your worth and value, self-love flew out for the outcome along with happy ending. Didn't I tell you we're going to be elated that there's something? So by you showing your self-love, because self-love is always more attractive. When you are a doormat, it, it, it's less attractive because people feel like you don't even care about yourself enough to stand up and speak up and fight back or defend yourself. So they just will treat you like you're, um, like you're non-existent, you know, like you, you're, you're nothing, you know. So when you do stand up for yourself and you do exhibit that self-love, that's what makes you more attractive. That's what puts you in the, this this. Uh, this energy of someone who knows their worth, you know, you know your value now, you know, and that's what the empress is. She knows her worth. She knows her value and she will never settle for anything less than what she knows she's deserved, deserving of. We got karmic completion here. So just as I was speaking of, you know, you having that cycle that you were really learning karmic lessons and, you know, learning from heartache, learning from betrayal, learning from backstabbing, learning from people that you trusted only to be deceived by them. This has armored you with a whole different protection um, and force field of protection that you have around you uh, because you're very uh, mindful now of who you allow in. And it's because you have self-love. So the, the, the games, the manipulation, the tricks that people were able to uh, get away with in the past, they won't be so lucky second time around. Um, and because you love yourself, now you're attracting what you deserve. You're attracting people, as I said, in your in your likeness. Um, and they will see you as your highness, you know, whether masculine or feminine. But you are getting um, abundance. You know, this abundance, this wish fulfillment, this miracle, these prayers are being answered and you're going to be super satisfied, very happy um, and you're going to feel fulfilled, you know, and I feel like this is rewards for, you know, completing those tough cycles, you know, finally wrapping up those tough cycles. I feel like you were absolutely dealing with karmics um, and because you've dealt with these karmics, you were able to you know, overcome some of these hurdles by learning those karmic lessons that they were in your life to teach you. So let's tap in, beloveds. Let's see what we got coming and going out, going on with my beloved Scorpios. What we have playing right now is we have Surface. And the name of this song is called Closer Than Friends. So there could be someone that maybe on the surface, they just show one thing, but deep down, they want to be closer than friends. Um, look what we have on the bottom of the deck as I'm speaking of that is we have this knave of chalices. So you may have someone watching you because this looks like someone just watching, watching in awe. And they're holding this chalice. So it's like, you know, someone that you may communicate with, someone that you know. Maybe this is someone that you attend classes with, someone that you're in uh, some sort of um, 
work environment with someone in your community what we have on the split is we have the eight of swords so maybe someone is coming back trying to emotionally manipulate you because you see how this deranged person has this feminine energy kind of locked in this vessel be mindful that someone's not doing like um binding rituals and styles. i feel like that's what changed within you also is like you know um you started to love yourself you also started to pay close attention to what people were saying I think it was that empress i was speaking to so you owned your power you took your power back like whoever that was that had you like in that bottle you know kind of watching you and trying to control you and manipulate you it's like you have emerged as this goddess and look at these mouths it's like there was so many so much gossip because this five is associated with the throat chakra and so if you look here you got a lot of people talking about you whispering even if you're masculine it's a lot of people whispering and there's some folks that's trying to get at you but you're protected you're, you're very protected but there's people gossiping running their mouths talking ish you know these are people that are very jealous i i get a sense of you having a lot of jealous folks around you and with surface these are people that don't show you who they truly are like these are people that just show you you know it's almost like they wear a mask in some sense but i see here that you've wrapped up a cycle there goes the death so that was the transformation you've transformed and emerged as this empress and that could be what the people are talking about maybe you have some folks that are like secretly admiring you whilst others are you know jealous and in a competition but there you're, you're on the tip of everybody's tongue like you're you're the hot topic so whatever you're doing if you're starting a business whatever you're doing there's a lot of people gossiping whispering about you they're whispering about your change. They're whispering, yo, have you seen, you know, Scorpio lately? Like, they completely changed. You're in your divine feminine energy. You're in your divine masculine energy. So there's a lot of people noticing your change, noticing your growth. So divine spirit of peace, power, and protection. But be mindful, you know, be mindful not to share too much also never share what you're doing what you're planning where you're going never share anything what we have in the bottom of the deck we have the eight of wands so you see how these people it looks like they're summoning energy it's like they're invoking some sort of energy here with this eight of wands and this incense just fell right as i said that i had it sticking in there and as the candle heats up it makes the wax melt and soft so it just fell but as soon as i said that so be mindful so there is definitely going to be some conversations about the changes you've made uh because something is changing quickly like you could be moving you know i was getting like a travel like you was traveling or you was going to be taking a trip or maybe you're just moving away period but i feel like with this eight of wands there's some there's something that you're manifesting this could be a miracle. This could be the answer to your prayers. It's like you've invoked something. You, you've you manifested something. Um, and you didn't realize it. This 8 and 5 breaks down 13. And that deals with the death card that we just saw. And it's currently 12, 12, which is 3, 3, which is 6. So I feel like Spirit is telling you, trust your intuition. I also feel like Spirit is saying, like... Um, like it's time to change even directions like that that's what you've come to the realization of like through your through your transformation through that startling a matter startling metamorphosis it was like it was necessary for you to change directions or change your course of action and that's where the distance came from that's why a timeout was next because that that allowed for you to distance yourself we have shaba ranks and this is respect this has garnered you some level of respect. And there goes the Six of Cups. I was telling you, someone from your past could potentially also be trying to um, make their way in, especially with all these retrogrades taking place. Don't be surprised if it kicks up a lot of that past energy, that residual energy. But you may have put someone on timeout from your past, and they're sitting back having these nostalgic thoughts. This person respects you more now. 
This person thinks about you a lot because it's now 12, 13, which breaks down to 7. So you live in someone's brain. I feel like now that you put someone in time out or because you put someone in time out, they have nothing but time to reflect on past actions, past deeds. Maybe this is just you reflecting, reminiscing, you know, and playing things in your mind as you take the necessary time out. Hi, friend. You good? So let's tap it. Why is this 37 time out here for who or what our beloved Scorpios are attracting to them? But that Six of Cups is someone from the past possibly returning. And we have the Knave of Wands here. So they're perhaps trying to plan to, you know, express something to you. What you have is the Six of Swords. Didn't I say you was moving away? Because I was getting the Six of Swords with this Five and this 37. So yeah, that's what you're doing. You took a time out to plan, to map out your plan. And you have the Ace of Pentacles. So there is um, an opportunity that's presenting itself, and I feel like you're going to move away. Maybe some of y'all are relocating for a career, a career opportunity, or maybe some of you are packing up and moving away to go after your dreams, to follow your dreams. I feel there's a blessing, you know, there's a reward, there's a, there's a financial windfall. We had that fortunate, and I was hearing Wheel of Fortune, and this is something that you've earned. And I feel because of the changes that you've made, whatever change that you've implemented, your ancestors are answering some sort of prayer for you. But moving away and getting away from the, ne the negativity and the drama, and you're heading right towards uh, this, this money, this windfall. So that time out has allowed for you to, you know, really assess uh, things and see things for what they truly were. And Spirit is telling me to put this Ace of Pentacles on the creativity card. So I will be obedient. So that's what someone realizes, how they feel about you is you're very successful. You have new opportunities. Your business is booming. Your career is, is uh, you know, taking new heights. You're on this upward spiral. Like things are really looking good for you, improving for you. You're financially free. And there's some good news that's going to be coming in because you have the knave of uh, wands and we're about to pull the uh, card for what's hidden, this abundance. So what you don't realize is there's some exciting news and this news is rushing in quickly because that seven that the 88 breaks down to um, is like the chariot. And this is bringing balance. I'm hearing it's restoring balance. And this is also our ultimately going to our garner you a lot of respect. You know, people are going to respect you because they, they're familiar with your story. Maybe people who, you know, was ruling you out or, um, you know, kind of like judging you, you know, kind of doubting your abilities. They're going to have to, like, eat their words. They're going to have to, you know, eat your dust because you're leaving them behind. So we got the Eight of Chalices. Didn't I mention the Eight of Chalices? Like, this is self-love. Like, whatever these people are buying, you know, selling, you're not buying. You're not buying into this negativity anymore. And you got the knave of chalices here. So you're going to be emotionally fulfilled. I also feel like spiritually um, you're in tune. You're tapped in. You're connected to Christ consciousness. You're connected to that God frequency. You receive divine downloads, interventions, transmissions. You may have very lucid dreams. And I feel like this is... You know, almost like it's 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 a way that spirit communicates. It's a divine intervention to let you know um, your spiritual uh, powers or your spiritual abilities, capabilities. Something's amplifying in terms of even your intuition or your psychic powers or just your um, skill set, period. It's something that you have really been developing and honing. You know, maybe you're learning now more to trust your intuition, whereas in the past, maybe you didn't listen. But now it's like you're more keen to listening and trusting that gumption. And and this is building some sort of, um, you know, spiritual power, prowess. Like you're getting, um, you're getting some divine downloads. I'll tell you that. And you have this eight of uh, chalices here. So what I said earlier, you know, self-love is all about walking away from relationships that leave you feeling emotionally bankrupt. 
And that's what you did. You walked away because whatever this person was selling, this con man, this con woman, this scammer, this deceitful person, this liar, this person wearing a mask. Whenever I see people wearing hoods, you know, and I always just get a sense of deception. Someone not, you know, revealing the true selves or their true intentions. But your self-love led to you walking away, moving away, leaving what doesn't serve you behind and owning your power now. And that's what's, you know, ultimately assuring you this happy ending. So why is the 61 self-love 93 happy ending here for Scorpio's um, outcome? We're going to clarify the messages again and then we're going to wrap it up. So divine spirit of peace, power, and protection. Thank you, spirit. And we have uh, the seven of wands. That's why. So because you're defending your, your honor, you're protecting yourself. When you think of the seven of wands in traditional tarot, it's about protection. And he looks like he's holding up like kryptonite to these, these demons, these monsters. You know, light. So it's like you're shining bright. You're like luminous. You're, you're, you're bringing some sort of positivity you know, um, to the equation, and that's what's garnering you some sort of happy ending. But you're also very protective of yourself. You're defending yourself. You're standing your ground. As I said, that was a change that you had implemented. Because in the past, maybe you were very uh, accommodating to other people's needs, and now you're more you're more accommodating to you. You're prioritizing you because you're you're functioning from a place of self love. You know, it's one thing to love people and to have their back, middle, front, side, up and down. But it's another when you love yourself with that same, you know, vigor, you know, and it's attractive. You know, so what you have is the three of uh, chalices here. So this is like a reunion, you know, coming into union, reunion, reuniting with folks. Um, I was picking up like traveling, taking a trip, going around family. And this looks like a, some sort of family reunion, like a surprise party, like you've been on a journey and. And, and everyone's there waiting. So there's some sort of reunion, you know, maybe reuniting with yourself even. But this is rejoice and celebration, some sort of party. And there goes the strength card, leaning in your strength, owning your strength, but also confronting your fears. Remember what I said about the ego. You know, the ego, you function from a place of fear. You know, you're afraid to be your authentic self. So you wear a mask and you portray this image of being something that you truly aren't, but it's just, it's just a, um, it's, it's just a, um, what's that word I'm looking for? A facade, thank you, spirit. And there goes the high priestess. So this is like, really like, um, you, 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 you looked at things from a different perspective and trusted your intuition. You may have felt like you were, you know, somebody was working on you or someone was doing some sort of voodoo juju, hoodoo, santeria, whatever they were doing. I feel like the curses will be broken. The hexes will be broken. You know, I feel like there's a redemption here. But I also feel because you've trusted your intuition, you have been able to outsmart some sort of demon. And thus you were able to confront them. As I said, positive energy activates constant elevation. And that is an acronym for peace. So I feel like you have peace because you maintain a positive attitude, even when you had, you know, people working against you, people going to spiritual practitioners, trying to put roots on you. I feel like you even became, you know, that high priestess and tapped into your own power. But there were things that were hidden. And then what was hidden was you had, you know, folks that were out to get you lies, you know, because this is the five of swords. So this is very smug energy. This is, you know, people who are. Um, intentionally out to get you, you know, and you could see clearly like you're running from all these demons, but when you turn around and confront them, when you confront your fears, when you confront these demons, you take your power back. And that's what self-love is all about. Self-love isn't about relinquishing control to other people. It's about knowing you're in control and you're garnered. You're, you're absolutely going to have a happy ending because that seven and that three reduces to 10. So there's an end of this torment. There's an end of these negative Nancy's Debbie Downers. It's like you're going to stand your ground. You're going to stand up for what you believe in. And you're blocking out the negativity. You're blocking out the hatred. And you're wrapping up that cycle. You're wrapping it up. You're not playing, you know, the uh, devil's game anymore. You're not falling into the trap anymore. It's done. So let's get some mass messages. I want to get some messages from 
romance angels. Let's see what's coming in from my beloved Scorpios with the romance angels. Look what's on the bottom of the deck. It says very soon, beloved. So very soon there is, you know, perhaps some romance that could be coming into your life. It says clearly decide what you want so that it can come down. So some of y'all aren't even thinking about romance. That's why spirit is like, do you want it or do you not? And there goes the release your ex card. So for some of you that are still holding on to someone, this is what they are creating in your life because they're in a secret competition with you. This is someone that studies you, watches you, and then tries to, you know, out you, sabotage you, block you. So you have to be very mindful of that. But it's time to release your ex because they are energy vampires. Divine spirit is power. And we have um, Duelle, and this is called Love Ultra. So spirit is saying you absolutely need a love, you know, that is is better, grander, you know, um, someone that speaks your love language, someone that emotes, someone that's not too proud and egotistical. And you even need to get rid of the pride and the ego uh, and, and, and surrender to spirit and see what spirit has to offer you. So divine spirit, please tell me to what messages do you have for my beloved Scorpio? Let's cut the deck. My spirit, peace, power, and protection. What messages do you have for my beloved Scorpio? Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection. Thank you, spirit. Bottom of the deck will clarify the overall energy, and you have make the effort. And didn't I say that's what she was doing? To in order for you to change, you had to make that effort. You had to make that effort. Make that change. It says great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. So that's exactly what you did. Spirit was telling you it's time to end this situation. It's the death of this because you've grown, you've outgrown that relationship or you've outgrown those circumstances. And by you making the effort, you're showing spirit that you know what you're deserving of. What we have here is children. Your love life is being affected by children. And so perhaps that's what you took the time out to do, to deal with your children, to deal with whatever healing they require, whatever, whatever counseling, whatever work, whatever it is that your children needed. So it's like that's what you took the time out to really um, focus on. Some of you may have relocated and moved away so that you can really nurture your children, love your children and help them through their process. Uh, spirit of peace, power and protection. Thank you. So you got a soulmate here. So it says soulmate. So you're attracting your soulmate. Remember I was picking up like with this five and this 37 that breaks down to six. I was getting the lovers. And I was saying that you could be attracting someone that's from a past life. And it says, yes, this is your soulmate. So someone that could be coming in. Um, and someone you may meet in this new location that you travel to. Or someone that you may meet. Um, after you've moved, after you've released that ex, is absolutely going to be a soulmate. And you're going to know that because you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the chemistry. You're going to feel the similarity, the familiarity. You're going to feel that synergy. There's going to be too much in common with this person. And there's going to be a very strong attraction, not just sexually, but there's going to be, you know, an attraction just of this person's mind. You're going to, you know, it's just like they're going to stimulate you in more ways than one. And I do feel like this is a very positive circumstance. What you also have is you have getting to know each other. So this is clarifying how someone feels about you. And remember, we have the three. And I was saying someone is very attracted to you because you're beautiful. You're handsome. You're fine. You're dapper. You know, you're someone you, you, you handle your business. You're very powerful. You know your worth. So that's attractive. You you just exude confidence and, and beauty. And, and um, you're a creative soul. You're wise. Um, you're luminous. You you have vitality, and it says as you re as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So whomever you're attracting to you, this is someone coming in um, that wants to invest. This is someone that may propose, and I say that because look what we have next that jumped out. What's hidden? This situation involves marriage. So what's hidden is you're going to have um, this emotional fulfillment. Because whoever this is that's coming in, I feel this is a spiritual connection because uh, we had that 7-7 seven, seven spirituality. And I do feel like this person is, you know, coming in very intentionally. Um, I feel like you're going to have 
emotional fulfillment, as I said, but also whoever this is, it's like they're mustering up the strength, the courage, they're planning, they're preparing to come towards you, to take action, to express how they feel, you know, and this will result in marriage. What you have here is retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. And that's what that 37 was, taking the time out to work on you, to learn to love you. That's an inside job. And when you love yourself, you become happier, you become, you know, healthier, not just for yourself, but in your relationships as well. And that that healthy, um, you know, communication, it will, you know, it reverberates in, in the stratosphere, the atmosphere in the universe and in this, you know, etheric place. So it's like you will attract what you are ultimately when you take the time to heal thyself. And learn to know thyself. You you will, you know, emerge someone that knows their worth. And that's exactly what you've been doing. So whoever these individuals are that are like secret attacks, secret enemies, hidden enemies, um, this is the work you've been doing. Is you're preparing and planning um, to confront your fears, or you've confronted your fears, and that's what's you know assuring this happy ending ultimately. And it's also you're going to be celebrating. You're going to be rejoicing. Because all of those who were, you know, praying on your downfall and praying that things wouldn't work out for you, they're going to, you know, they're going to be left behind. So divine spirit of peace, power, and protection. They get a message from my beloved Scorpios for the outcome. Why is the 61 self-love happy ending? The three of chalices, the strength card, high priestess, and the five of swords. What did I say about deception? And that's literally here. You know, you can see the deception here. You know, whatever this is, hidden. They're trying to deceive you. They're trying to trick you. They're trying to get you to, to be afraid. And I feel like when you run from a problem, the problem never gets resolved. But when you confront the problem, you see clearly that, you know, this bark isn't as bad as this bite. You know what I'm talking about? So there is a deceptive energy, and that's why uh, Spirit is saying you will have a happy ending. When you show yourself love, it says someone is wearing a false mask, uh, a false self mask in this relationship. And that's a part of, you know, fear. That's a part of the ego as well. Next, we have chemistry. Remember, I spoke of you having a really beautiful chemistry, synergy, familiarity with another person. And so as you love yourself, you show others how to love you. And then you have, this could be the one. And it says you've already met the romantic partner that you seek. So this could either be in this lifetime or in a former lifetime. But someone that you know. Someone, whoever you have really beautiful chemistry with, that may be the one. Because it says this could be the one. It's not saying this is the one, but this could be the one. But maybe someone is deceiving themselves, and maybe someone's fears and ego is what was hindering them and blocking them. Hence, that's why that card showed up. Because someone has to have an ego death in order to, you know, be able to pursue this connection, be able to pursue this relationship uh, and not walk around wearing a mask or, you know, wearing this fake facade. So with playfulness, it says to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit to, uh, you know, um, spirit of fun to shine. Pardon me. So it says to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So be fun, you know, fun and smiling and being happy. Like I said, positive energy activates constant elevation. When you are having fun and being playful, what you send into the ethers is more of that energy. When you're constantly stressing and overthinking about things you have no control over, you're creating more of that. People cannot understand that, that what you harp over and stress over, you're creating that. So instead of focusing on the problem, focus only on the solution. Instead of saying what you don't have, speak as if you already have it. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't care if you have to lie to kick it, but it's about a change in your consciousness that will change your reality because your mind acts as a projector. So whatever you're thinking in your mind, your reality is going to project exactly that. So that is what the trick is, is changing your mind to change your reality. So, let's get additional messages to clarify, and then we're going to wrap it up. Ah, shit. All right, so we got a card hiding in here. Do you want to come out and play a... 
So the card that was hiding inside of the box was enlightening. So someone is definitely a little uh, jealous of you becoming more enlightened. And they're watching you grow. They're watching you evolve. You know, because this is that same energy. You know, this is that number three of how they feel about you. The creativity. That yellow is the, the color of the sun. And the sun is illuminous. You know, that speaks the truth and wisdom. But you are protected from those hidden enemies because you have protection here. So you are absolutely protected from those who may be trying to, you know, sabotage opportunities. So spirit, let me get a message of peace, power, and protection for my beloved, beloved Scorpios. Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection, spirit. Let me get a message of peace, power, and protection for my beloved Scorpios. Messages you have. Clarify these messages, spirit. So we have a card that flew around, and this is Mut, and it says being ordinary. This card has come out a lot. So I don't feel like you're ordinary. I feel like you're meant to be extraordinary. And a lot of you were kind of like almost dimming your own light, trying to get in to fit in. And you're not meant to fit into any small circles. You're not meant to fit into anything. You're meant to be your true, authentic self. You're meant to be your unique self. And for many of you, you were... Um, really trying to force situations that weren't meant for you and that's what you needed to change so that's powerful what we have on the bottom of the deck is we have transformation see that so you absolutely went through some sort of startling metamorphosis that was the time necessary that you took that's what's on the bottom of the deck so let's clarify these messages divine spirit all right so i'm going to pull so this is going to clarify that and so it says fruitfulness so you will have a very fruitful uh, relationship, fruitful situationship, death and rebirth. See that? Transforming. This is what you've emerged as. Someone who's gone through a very difficult time, a uh, tumultuous time, but you've persevered. You've overcome. You've shown resilience and strength um, through that transformation, through that death. And now that's why you are now here uh, stronger than ever, wiser than ever. That's why you're being rewarded and blissed with new opportunities, fortune and fame, um, and even a new love shift because you have getting to know each other. Uh, what you have playing right now, love you, Donnie, is you have um, a girl blunt. <laughs> so some of y'all could be like celebrating, you know, smoking and chiefing a little green, chiefing a little L, you know, here, you know, blowing a little something in the air, a little Bob Marley. Um, but I do feel like your hard work does pay off and there is some recognition, some reward, um, some blessing. Some of y'all could be from Brooklyn, New York. Some of you could be in California. But you are wiser. We got this wisdom card here and that's absolutely what I was feeling like you have matured. You know, this is about maturation. This is also about building your wealth of knowledge, owning your power and finding that balance within yourself. But this is also a clarifying that what's hidden and so i feel like spiritually you're becoming wiser spiritually you're in alignment so there is a card that flipped over and we have alchemical force that's because you're creating your reality you've realized you're the alchemist you're manifesting these wish fulfillments you're calling it in drawing it in and you're attracting it to you so what is the outcome for my beloved scorpios why is the 61 self-love happy ending the strength card the high priestess Deception, chemistry, this could be the one, five of swords, and the three of chalices for the outcome. We get a message of peace, power, and protection, spirit. Thank you, spirit. Okay. And we have on the bottom of the deck, it says um, darkness. So that same deceptive person was, you know, making life very unhappy for you. Even when you look at this karmic... Um, completion card. It's a very gray and gloomy card. So whoever you was dealing with brought a lot of darkness into your life. Brought a lot of drama. Brought a lot of negativity. This is someone that summons a lot of negativity also. This is someone who has a dark spirit. A very dark spirit. A dark soul. Someone who's very combative. Argumentative. Hostile. Never meet anyone on that vibration where they are. You, you stay vibing higher. You know, so you have protection. I love it. Protection flew out. So you are protected from that dark energy. 
Whoever this is trying to bring darkness into your life, trying to block your blessings, you're going to have a happy ending regardless and contrary to whatever they're trying to do. It's very evident that you have people after you. You know, you may be, um, you know, finding people just being combative and, and always wanting to debate. When you have that type of energy, just let, you know, just yes them to death. Or just say, just say no. Don't don't involve yourself with that energy. Next, you have wholeness. So these individuals are very perturbed because you are now back. You you you're you're back in alignment with yourself. You're in oneness. You're in wholeness. You're in balance, and they can no longer control and manipulate you. And you're complete. So you've wrapped up this cycle, and this is why they are stuck. You know, right where you left them. You cut them off and they feel this darkness. Because you're illuminating here. You're you're very, you know, illuminous and, and, and sunny and bright and happy and just jovial. And they're stuck in the darkness. And this is very karmic. You know, whatever they have done, they're going to get an abundance of it. Same as you. You're going to get abundance based off of the seeds you've sown and whatever, you know, Whatever energy, good or bad, it's like you reap what you sow. People don't realize that. Someone is very passionate about bringing this darkness upon you as well. But Spirit says you're going to persevere over your enemies. So your hidden enemies don't know who you are. They're only creating their own um, karma. You know, they're creating their own tumultuous um, circumstances. They don't realize that, though. So let's get some messages from a deck I created, and then we're going to wrap it up. So someone may come in trying to guilt trip you, but don't trip. You know, they may tell you all the things that are going on in their life. This could be a past life. I mean, a past, like an ex-person. You know, they could be going through something difficult. And if somebody, you know, has some sort of, um, you know, unfortunate circumstances that take place, that is a sign of who's been, you know, Kind of praying on your downfall also like if you just hear somebody suddenly getting sick and you perform say for instance like you protect yourself and you perform like a protection ritual on yourself on your family on your finances and then someone suddenly gets sick or someone suddenly has some sort of misfortune um rain on them that's a sign of who was praying on your downfall so pay attention to that so the divine spirit of peace power and protection what messages do you have for my beloved scorpios for the outcome i mean for the um for the overall energy and it says the four walls are closing in on you get out of the house now and take a walk so remember i was speaking to nature getting out in nature and the necessity of being amongst the trees and being amongst the water and really planting your feet you know in the on the earth and really connecting and allowing yourself to purge well this is the reason why because when you're in the house that's almost very similar to being in your head you know, so you need to get out of your head because the mind is the devil's playground. You know, if you overthink, you know, um, so, you know, you made necessary changes and you started to learn, you know, you started to really learn uh, better ways to cope with your circumstances. Um, and you also realize that you're not meant to be like everyone else, that you're very unique and you're rare. You're like a, you know, you're, you're like an earth angel. You know, you're just different. You're born different you're made different this cards these two cards you see how they're split between the deck these are also going to be your messages for the overall energy i'm going to take those it says mental health matters stop overthinking i can't make this ish up so if some of y'all are just stuck in the house just thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking it's time to get out because your mental health is is being affected you know too much of anything isn't good for you so I feel like spirit is really screaming at some of y'all to get out of the house, to make the effort to go outside, you know, and to really heal thyself, to really get back to one, you know, and you can't do that sitting up in the house, looking at the same four walls. You have to get out and you, this, this nature provides fresh perspective, you know, nature releases you of stress, anxiety, fears, and worry, you know, and the earth will also purge you when you take your shoes off and you walk barefoot or you stand in the grass or you stand in dirt it will purge you of any you know heaviness or any negativity that you might be carrying next you have frenemies they don't really rock with you like that trust so this is what you had to realize this is the changes that you've made 
Just as I said in the beginning, it's like, yo, whoever you was dealing with, these people were mentally, like, mind ucking you. They were duping you. They were gaslighting you. They were using you. They were befriending you to get what they needed. They used you as, you know, like a life force. And they weren't really your friends. These were enemies. These were people that were smiling and beguiling and putting on a facade, wearing a mask, being deceptive, only to get what they want. And the moment you started to change, you may have noticed a shift in them. You may have noticed something, you know, really become really ugly in terms of their behavior and their attitude. The jealousy started to really rage or the envy, the competitiveness. What you have here is they... they they for everybody commitment full wandering eyes. So someone that you could have been dealing with in the past or someone you were attracted uh, to, you know, was definitely, um, you know, non-committal. You know, this is somebody that was a player and that's someone that you, you know, had no choice but to put them on time out. And that's that same person that could have possibly, you know, been in that Six of Cups energy where they was just sitting back nostalgic, you know. But I feel like you're attracting your true soulmate. You're attracting someone that is, um, you know, very intentional in their actions. So what flew out is you have cowards run from a problem, not towards it. If they wanted to, they would have fought for you. So it isn't your, it isn't your fault. You walking away from the situation or someone who, you know, constantly walked away from having a conversation to come to some sort of... Um, you know, to try to come to some sort of understanding. Um, if they constantly ran from having that conversation, that's guilt. You know, that's not someone who's a man or a woman about theirs. That's someone who does not want to um, admit their wrongs. That's very narcissistic as well. That's also a part of power and control. And that's, again, ego. So what we have here is regal, royal. There's levels and you supersede them, diamond in the rough. And we're about to pull the card for how they feel about you. Remember, we got that three, the Empress energy. So someone definitely sees you as being very regal, very royal. Someone appreciates you for being this. They're not in competition because you're that and they're not. You know, this is someone that's definitely um, very much attracted and intrigued. Katara, what are you doing? She over here knocking all my cards down. Girl, she is just like a little baby, just constantly into stuff. Can you move? <laughs> you all, She always wants to be <laughs> up under me when I'm doing my readings. So I have like the chair. I'm like sitting on the chair and I have my cards in the back. And she just completely knocked all of the cards down and they fell out of the containers. Like, girl. All right. She's back here kneading. You know how they knead like on soft things. <laughs> So she's like kneading and knocking stuff down. That little baby flan. All right. So um, so with this regal and royal, they definitely see you, as I said, as a, your highness, you know, um, very powerful, uh, you know, someone very self-aware, self-confident, um, you know. And, and, and they see you as someone that they can, you know definitely build with you know that they really want to um get to know you because they're intrigued whoever you're attracting to you is very intrigued and it says sacred space offerings honor your ancestors guides spirit team so take the necessary time you know someone definitely sees that you've created a sacred space because you've moved away and you're very protective of your space. But you also need to um, give honor and respect to your ancestors. Give them offerings. Find out what their feast days are and leave their favorite fruits, their favorite drinks. Leave things out to honor your ancestors. Smoke a stove, a cigarette in their honor, a cigar in their honor. If you don't want to inhale, you can just leave it burning on the altar. Of course, uh, keep you know watch it, monitor it. Um, you know, pour their favorite libation, whether it be wine, whether it be whiskey, rum, um, vodka, you know, pour them what they like. Um, give, they, give them what they need. You have to feed your ancestors um, the same way your belly needs food and you need to eat, your ancestors do as well. So devote more time uh, because I feel like your blessings are coming directly from your ancestors like they're conspiring. Um, to bring you your divine counterpart, to bring you success and hone your skills, gifts and talents. Uh, the more you hone them, the more you practice, the more, you know, 
the more you are assured success. You know, I feel you'll also meet someone you're meant to be with, uh, you know, mastering your craft. You know, maybe if you are a musician, you might go to, you know, um, a music store to purchase an instrument or purchase something you need. And you might find somebody that's just on your frequency, you know, someone you have chemistry with, someone that's like really speaks your language in many ways. And this can lead to marriage. This could lead to something deeper. Um, and this is something you've manifested unbeknownst to you. Um, you know, so this is like a wish fulfillment. And we also have be thankful you fell down but got back up. You know, and so this is a song uh, by Donnie McClurkin that came out back in the 90s. We fall down, but we get up. So you've fallen and yet you are still here, beloved. So whomever these individuals are that are your secret en enemies, that is why they're truly jealous is because you've shown resilience. You've shown um, that you're stronger than they thought you were. You're strong. You know, and, and they're jealous of your strength because maybe they're not as strong as you because they would not have been able to survive what you've been through, what they've put you through. They would not have survived. They would not have landed on their feet in the way that you have. So divine spirit, let me get a message for the outcome energy and then we're going to wrap it up. Wow. You got a lot of messages and we have jealousy as a sickness. Hater alert. Stark alert. I told y'all. I can't make this issue up. Y'all got a hater on your heels. These mofos is jealous. And it's because you, whatever traps they were setting for you, you could have fallen in them traps and still came out on top. So it's like these individuals aren't built like you. They're not like you because you are truly regal royal. You are truly, you have a, a an anointing and a calling on your life. So what you have is life is good. Didn't I tell you? We opened up the reading with Nas, Locomotive. So that train is very indicative. What I'm getting now is you moving on, you you moving away, you creating distance and space and leaving those individuals behind. And it says you what you put out, you get back. So that's why you're getting good karma. So this is about karma, Donna. This is that number eight. And this is what this 88 abundance is. This is the infinity symbol sideways. So whatever you put out, you get back. And vice versa. And there's sirens going off. Whenever I hear sirens, I always feel like that's a cause of alarm. And I feel like we already know what the alarm is. And it's because you have some hidden enemies here. And remember what the spirit already told you. You are protected. So you're protected from your hidden enemies. From your known enemies. You're protected. I feel spirit is also telling you protect yourself. But life is good based off of the deeds, your deeds. When you put out good, when you put good things out in the universe and you treat people fairly and you treat people kindly, then you get that back. And when you do the opposite of that, you get exactly that as well. And it says stress kill, destroy stress. So don't be allowing yourselves to get stressed by things that may have occurred that you have no control over. All you can do is control yourself. All you can do is gauge your own emotional roller coaster. So don't let people come in and push buttons and trigger you um, in ways that will make you, you know, kind of put you on their level or it will kind of change your own vibration and frequency. It's like either people need to rise to where you are or they just leave them alone. But stress kill destroys stress. You have to eliminate the stress. And the way you do that is, as I said, go out in nature, uh, find something. Um, you know, a beautiful tree to sit by, find a beautiful body of water, maybe take a walk, you know, when it's not too hot. I know it's been scorching out here. It's been record breaking temperatures all over the globe, you know, so Mother Gaia, Daughter Earth is definitely, there are some shifts and I feel like the shift is we are entering this new earth, you know, um, so you got to kill the stress or the stress will kill you. Next, we have celibacy, no self-pleasure, maintaining self-control. So a lot of you have been definitely without, you know, um, you've been, you know, uh, without being intimate with another p person. And I feel like that's what's also strengthened you spiritually, uh, because a lot of people don't realize that whoever you lay with, um, if you're laying with somebody who's promiscuous or even if you're promiscuous, everyone you lay with, especially as a feminine and a masculine energy, you will be stuck with that person's energy, especially a feminine if you're laying with a masculine who's just out there giving the D to everybody, it's like every partner they rested with, that energy is now within you. 
you know, we are the receivers, you know, and so you're going to receive that energy from that masculine and vice versa. The masculines will, you know, they are the givers. So they're going to give you the energy. So it's almost like they're the host. So you, it, it will behoove you to, to just be without intimacy at this time because there's a lot of Jezebel energy. There's a lot of incubus, succubus type of energy out here. People are just having sex and it's just the overly sexual, um, you know, energy that they're trying to make popular. I can't stand the stripper, you know, culture, this, this whole culture. I, I don't get it. You know, there, there's nothing cool about walking around half naked and shaking your behind at 40 years old, twerking. I'm like, aren't y'all sick and tired of seeing that? Like, that is just so shameful. I, I feel for the ancestors who have fought so hard, you know, to get us to where we are, where we can actually have some things. And 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 this is what we've fallen like we've come to the this point where you know women feel like it's empowering to to be hoes <laughs> and and i'm not judging but that's just you got to call it what it is like you got women on there calling themselves sluts and hoes and they take pride in being a slut they take pride in being strippers and and and, and shaking their asses and it's just it's just so disturbing it's really disturbing and so it's like you know with in this this age in this time where sex sells and drugs and all of these things it's like you have to um not follow what other people are doing and you have to really stand on your own moral principles your moral compass and you know go against the grain in that regard um it is just very demeaning you know to see grown women just you know sitting there with their behinds tooted up just to get attention that's all it is is attention horrorism you know these are women that's thirsty for attention dying for attention probably didn't have a father figure never had true love and so they resort to selling their body parts to get it and they still are left empty and they're still unhappy even with all the money they may acqu accumulate you know up and down a stripping pole every night um there's still a vacancy you know there's still something that's that they're you know absent of which is self-love because someone that truly loves themselves doesn't go through those means um you know to to acquire wealth or whatever to me that's like a back route it's so easy to take off your clothes and make money but it's 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 harder for you to build a true skill set and really discover what your purpose is and then embark upon that you know it's easier to find a way out it's easy for you to go sell drugs if you're a masculine and don't want to go and learn a trade and work with your hands it's easier to do that you know what i'm saying and i'm not judging anyone who takes those routes but i'm just saying it's that's a back route you know that's not what you're here to do that's not going to garner true success in life you're going to always have to pay for those souls that you stole uh, when you were serving them drugs to those people, when you was selling your behind, you know, and, and, and you know, that Jezebel spirit, you, you're going to have to pay for all of that. We all have to pay for everything we do, you know, flipping someone off at, at a stoplight or somebody that cut you off on the highway. I'm guilty sometimes, you know, when a mofo f cuts me off on the highway, I get very angry because I'm carrying precious cargo, which are my children. You know, and so I, I, I have those moments where I get upset and I got to pay for all of the F words I call that person. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But I digress. So celibacy, this is this is really to protect you so that you don't, you know, take on those those um those sex demons, those that energy. It's like really purifying your energy right now and being without sex and being without, you know, maybe this is spirit's way of saying like you, you know, by being celibate, you won't contract a spiritual spiritually transmitted disease so maintain self-control someone comes around um trying to entice you don't allow yourselves to fall for the okie doke okay um next we have look at this i always feel like somebody's watching me so this is like the umpteenth time that spirit has confirmed that you're being watched you already had jealousy is a sickness stalker alert hater hater alert um and look what just flew out as i did that judas so you do have a Judas, you have a liar, you have a stalker, you have someone that is definitely in a secret competition with you, someone that's a hater. Um, and then we have 
where have you been all of my life? So this is that person um, that I was feeling like that soulmate, someone that you've met in a former life, someone that you will have that chemistry with that's coming in. And someone from your past, some of these people you left behind, they're, they're watching in disgust. They're watching with so much contempt and malice and disdain. It's not even funny. So protect yourself. Protect yourself, beloveds. And next we have block a block a block So block those who don't have anything to offer you. You know, if they, they coming back saying the same ish, doing the same things, being the same, like you have, there's no place for that. Because remember, you have created a sacred space, a protective space, a protective bubble to avoid those type of interactions. So block anyone, anything that doesn't speak your, you know, speak your language, your love language. And next we have remorse, regret, shame. They now see the role they play. So it's going to take someone to go through an ego death to finally see what they've lost, to finally see, um, you know, who you are. Because there's a lot of protect, you know, projection. You know, people who are hurt, they hurt other people, and it's a repetitive cycle. It's a vicious cycle. But that's why it takes someone to step out and make the change, make the effort to change, make the effort to heal. And when you do that, you start to see, you know, that work pay off. And when others aren't doing that, they become very jealous. Um, but I do feel like someone is really mentally ill. Someone that you're dealing with, I feel like their jealousy, their envy, their competitiveness is turning into something that's more um, sinister. So just be mindful. Because someone is absolutely like, they're obsessive or possessive. They watch you constantly. If you have social media, they, they live on your social media accounts. If this is someone that you know and you've been with in the past, they constantly looking at photos, constantly. It's like they are obsessively um, watching you and, and stressing over the, a situation from the past. And, and, and like I said, the ego will have you act in a certain way that you truly don't feel, but it's a facade. And so someone truly feels remorse and regret, but on the surface, they act like they don't care. Remember, we had surface. And closer than just friends. So this can be someone that you were in a relationship with or someone that you could have called your brethren, your sister. They were closer than just a friend. You didn't just call them a friend. But whoever you was dealing with, spirit is saying they were your frenemies. They don't really rock with you. They didn't rock with you. They were in a competition. And they could have ran from, you know, the situation. Maybe they rejected you or maybe they thought when they stabbed you with that sword in your heart that it was you was done, done, fin, that you was over. And they just left you for dead. They just left you out there and, you know, you recovered. Not only did you recover, you emerged as an empress. You know, you went through that rebirth, that transformation, that death. And you transmuted all of that pain that you initially felt, turned it into power. And hence you being this empress, this emperor now. And that's really what they're jealous about. Because when they thought they offed you, they thought it was for, for good. And, and here you are emerging better, wiser, you're fortunate, you're successful. And you have new love coming in and they and they're pissed off because it's like they it's a missed opportunity. But this is your reading, beloved Scorpios. Thank you so much for tuning and tapping in. I hope the message is resonated. If you found that it did, please be kind. Hit the like button, hit the share button. If you're interested in booking a consultation with me, check my description box. There is a link that will take you to my Etsy shop and you can book uh, an emergency reading, which is a one hour reading. You could book a deep dive that is also one hours, um, or you could book a deeper dive that is two hours. The only difference between the emergency reads and the other readings is the emergency reading. You will receive that within 24 hours. Okay. Um, the other readings, you will receive your readings within four to five business days. But um, thank you so much for everyone who has already booked your consultations. I'm truly honored. It has been a pleasure. Just check, you know, tapping into your energy. I really appreciate those of you who have also patronized my shop. Um, I thank you all so much just for the love, the rotation of the love. We already know love is love is love. Until next time, I send a big fat ashe yo. And thank you to all of those who are returning. You already know what it is. Mwah. Appreciate y'all. Peace.